First things first, who's Nehemiah? He's a, he's a devout Jew who loved God, and he was providentially raised up by God to become the cupbearer of the Persian king, the Persian emperor. Now, I'll explain this in a minute, but the cupbearer is one of the most powerful positions in the royal court back then. And think of that. Here's one of God's own men raised up by God to occupy one of the most powerful, influential positions in the government of the mightiest nation at that time, Persia. Why, you'd almost get to think by looking at this setup that God's in charge, wouldn't you? Sometimes you wonder about that. Now, how did Nehemiah, a Jew, come by this, this position? We don't know for sure, but if you've ever read the story of Esther, how many of you ever read the story of Esther? This happened a generation or so before Nehemiah. In Esther, we learned that there's this Jewish man named Mordecai who saves uh, the Persian king at that time from an assassination attempt. And so it's reasonable to assume that the Jews were, were held in very high regard in the king's court in the time of Nehemiah. So that's probably how he got the position. Now, the position itself tells us something of Nehemiah's character, that he was the cupbearer to the king. Now, what's the cupbearer? What did they do? Anybody know? And why it was an important position? They tasted the food and drink that was brought before the emperor. You say, a oh, big deal. Anybody could do that. Oh, no, no. You see, back in those days, one of the best ways to off your enemies was poisoning. If Tony Soprano lived by, by back then, that's what he would, would have used to, to, to whack them. He'd use poisoning. It was a saying in the time of the Roman emperors that mushrooms were the food of the gods because in eating a mushroom, oftentimes you would die and become a god, which is how the Romans thought what happened after the emperor died. And that's what happened to Nero. Nero came to power. He, he poisoned his stepfather Claudius, and then his only rival was Britannicus, his stepbrother. He poisoned him too. <laughs> Crazy. Why isn't HBO doing a series on this? So the cupbearer was the first line of defense the emperor had. So what does that tell you about the importance of the cupbearer? This isn't just some sloppy guy they dragged in off the street. <laughs> oh, I'll eat your mushrooms for you. No. You're hobnobbing with royalty. With the emperor, that means you had to be educated, you had to be distinguished, you had to be a man of honor, you also had to be a man of integrity. He's eating the food that the king's going to eat, you have to be able to trust him. Nehemiah fulfilled and checked all those boxes. He had a high and holy pedigree. He was truly a great man. Nehemiah was very much cut from the same cloth as Moses or David or Daniel. And so as you stand back and you see this at the beginning of the story, it should send shivers down your spine to see how God has set all this up to have this man in place while his people are living in squalor. And what do you think God is going to have Nehemiah do? Any ideas? God is going to use Nehemiah to get those walls rebuilt, put Jerusalem back on its feet again, put them back on the map again, and start bringing hope and motivation to this group of people. 